everyone. This is Kim O'Neill from the Every Day is a New Day podcast and live show, and you're listening to the Going North podcast with the hilarious Dom Brightman. Be sure to subscribe to his show so you don't miss any episodes. And remember, every day is always a new day. When they say it's so nice, you got to do it twice. Welcome to the Going North podcast, baby, where we bring you some super special, awesome humans from around the globe. And I thank my good buddy, Miss Amber Love herself, Miss Amber Carr herself, the lady whose first name is the same, but her last names are probably like, oh my God, probably she has like five different last names, maybe. It's probably so she can probably stop having online strangers hit on her. Maybe that's the reason why. But hey, that's besides the point. We got one heck of a super special, awesome guest for her today. I call this woman an angel because we originally recorded this a couple of months ago. And I tried to outsource the editing and it was god awful because of the cracking noise. So she graciously decided to grace us with the wonderful angelic presence once again because she is one heck of a super special awesome human because not only is she a licensed psychotherapist she also is a number one international best-selling author of the book called abundance on demand and she also is known as a secret weapon of peak performers top athletes ceos and business leaders so let's give it up for the one the only cs herself the celestial and striking miss colette striker how you doing today colette I'm doing great, Dom. I mean, we had so much fun last time. I thought, yeah, let's do this again. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We'll tell you if you're good. We'll tell you why we're laughing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Apparently our cheeks were hurting before the record button because of the laughter we had the last (laughs) time when I fell into my old trap. Yeah, it was still good times. (laughs) oh man so (laughs) but hey it's all good it's all good as with all introductions and all stories like the thing is (laughs) you didn't always get to where you were today at this level of fabulosity so how did it happen how did that happen oh my goodness yeah i was born in france as you can see my hear my accent i don't know if you don't see it <laughs> hear my accent and uh, i was born in france and uh, decided to come to america to just become the best therapist i could be you know learn everything and after 15 years of learning everything i could find all the alternative going to the university getting a master's degree and all of that good stuff I thought I was a good therapist. Well, well, well. (laughs) Uh, I inherited money from my family and I began to squander the whole thing. Like I gave it away. I lost it. I got, you know, foreclosures and this and that. And at the end of it, two and a half years later, I look at my bank account and I just cannot believe what I see. Like I said, that's not the right bank account. That's not possible. Guess what? It was down to zero, zero dot zero, zero, <laughs> not even five bucks in there. <laughs> I had lost it all because I squandered it all. And then I realized, oh my, that totally woke me up literally it's like wow oh that's what the subconscious blocks are all around and about (laughs) i what did i do for two and a half years with this money i completely hypnotized you know i was (laughs) i was throwing the money out of the window and uh i realized wow what are those subconscious money blocks and imagine that after 15 years of training and therapy i never heard of money blocks in especially at school you know we never studied that kind of blocks so i say you know what let's go and study that like crazy because i don't want this to happen to anyone else and i want to recoup that money you know and value what my father left me and really do the best i can so i go on another journey took me about 11 different techniques and methods for a full year studying all those little angles of how do you address money blocks? What are they anyway? Where do they come from? 
all of that. So I clear my money blocks and I realize, wow, this is like anchored everywhere. It's like a deep identity thing that's in your DNA. You have to look into what happened generations ago in your parents' sides, you know. Uh, it's when you were in the womb even, what happened when your parents lost their house and you were in the womb and you got that message that there was, you know, insecurity in this world. And, the, and then I realized the Chinese medicine and there are meridians and Chinese elements, uh, the five elements and the chakra system. I mean, I realized those money blocks are actually kind of written in every area of the body, the mind, the energy system and your entire soul story. So, wow. And I say, there is no one method right now on the planet that's doing it all. You have to go to 11 different therapies like I did in a year to try to clear all those things because I was on a mission, you know, to not leave one stone unturned. And I realized, wow, just missing something. So I didn't know where else to look because after 15 years of studying psychology and so many, uh, all the alternative and like for those who will hear it and know perhaps uh, the NLP, the EFT, the hypnosis, the EMDR, I mean, every method you can imagine for 15 years, I studied them. So I thought, you know, I that's where I thought I was a good therapist until I lost all my money. <laughs> And then I realized, okay, we need a method that's better than that, like a holistic, integrative method that would treat everything at the same time. So you don't lose all this time, energy, money to go everywhere. So I didn't know where else to look. And the universe gave me an answer. When you ask, it is given. And sometimes it's very surprisingly given. So what happened is I had this client coming from France and she didn't tell me the truth, to say the truth. <laughs> she didn't tell me that she was suffering from something else than what she told me. She told me depression, anxiety, and phobias. I said, oh, I can handle that. But then when she comes out of the airport, she's, she's on fire. She's excited. She's not slept for several days. She's... I realized, oh my gosh, she has a bipolar disorder. She is oh. on the manic side. And I have now someone on my hands, this young girl, for three weeks. Imagine oh. a teenager, actually, she was 17. She ended up being, you know, it was literally a little bit of a nightmare, if you can imagine, uh, taking care of someone like that. That and I realized, oh, quick, I need to learn psychiatry now. <laughs> 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 so I jump into psychiatry, trying to look. I don't know anything about personality disorders. So here we go. And I'm looking for something cool and something that I could give her. So she comes back to France, not totally empty handed because I didn't have any tools to deal with her bipolar disorder, you know, even though I had some, but not enough, not strong enough. So, uh, so here we go. I, uh, I study everything I could find. That's when I found the work of Dr. Flint. So Dr. Flint at the time was in Canada and he was a psychologist working on the, you know, the deepest stuff on the planet that you can imagine, the, the schizophrenia, the, all the thing, uh, trauma survivors and all of that. And he had found a great idea to train the mind to heal itself. Oh, what a good idea. <laughs> You have the psychotherapist inside of your mind, you know. So I was thinking, wow, this is genius. It's like he was training the subconscious mind to heal the subconscious programs. It's like you have a healer inside of you. It's like, wow, this is genius. I've never thought about it. I tried to call him. 
And well, it takes about three months before he answers his phone call. So my client is away and it's you know, gone <laughs> by then. <laughs> Long gone. And uh, he answers the call and he tells me, Colette, I've been retired for like 17 years. Nobody knows my work. And I'm so happy that you heard about it. And yeah, and then he begins to tell me, I, I, me and my son actually, who is a coach, um, we said, hey, could you mentor us? Could you tell us and teach us? And he says, yes, he would do that. So now we are taught by him. And that was fantastic. That was incredible. So we began to get great results and all of that. And however, there was still something that haunted me over and over again, was remembering the 11 different therapies that I went to for the money blocks they were very different. They were not the traditional therapies. They were like the past life therapy, the um, going into the chakra system, like I said, uh, rewiring the DNA, uh, taking care of you know ancestral history and traumas and things that traditional psychology doesn't include in the definition of subconscious. You see, my psychologist, Dr. Flynn, didn't include all those alternative approaches that were needed to clear literally something deeply enough so that it can be released completely. So I had that thought coming in saying, ah, oh, you need something else stronger and more powerful than the definition of the subconscious. And then I downloaded, literally that idea came to me in an instant. And, let, and stayed with me for three weeks. And it was used a super conscious mind. You see Dom, there is the conscious and there is the unconscious, which we call subconscious, which is all the programs, beliefs, memories, everything you have learned during your lifetime. But there is the super conscious mind, which is the awareness, the consciousness, your higher self, if you want, a part of you that actually knows everything. He's connected to everything, has never been hurt, hurt in trauma or anything. It's just the observer part of you. So for those who do meditation or whatever, they have learned about this part of us that kind of observes things and is never really involved. But that part of us is super powerful. It's called the super conscious mind because of that. And I realized that I could train the super conscious mind that knows every method on the planet, that knows everything, what happened seven generations ago on your father's side? It knows what happened in the womb. It knows what is going on in your chakra system, energy system. And therefore, we could train the superconscious mind to actually learn to deep dive into this unconscious slash subconscious and find those memories, beliefs, and emotions that do not serve us and neutralize them on command like that. So we train the superconscious and we can give it a command to go, hey, Joe, superconscious, <laughs> come on, go into the unconscious, find what's blocking me, what's giving me this phobia, or this fear, and neutralize that memory. And then minutes later, the memory has been neutralized and the client feels better and better. And there are a little bit of layers and then, for example, someone who has a phobia of height, well, now we can go on the balcony, look down and laugh at the little cars. While before that, she was, you know, squatted in the corner of the thing and trying, I couldn't even approach the, the balcony. So, <laughs> so, yes, we can literally, and that's the revolution in the field of psychology, because we can literally give a command to a part of your mind to heal another part of your mind. And there is no more limitations of any kind. So, so that was the method I discovered on my path. And of course I used it for money. And, you know, and now, you know, I own, of course, an international business. I didn't tell you that, but it's a, it's a big international business. We have 20 people in the team. And, uh, and we coach and train around the world, uh, psychotherapists, uh, doctors, chiropractors, and nutritionists, and also coaches and healers in that method. 
which is called, by the way, forgot to tell you, it's called MAP. It's like make anything possible. <laughs> MAP, make anything possible. <laughs> and it's also a map of the subconscious where we can literally, for the first time, systematically address a, a complex memory structure, but we can address it with a, with a, through a map where we can find out exactly what to treat and when in which order in association and cooperation with the superconscious mind. Um, so here we go, we have the map method and it, um, it's out there. So what I wanted to share with you today was the money blocks and the money blocks that I discovered when I went on my journey and clear them all and wrote a book that's called Abundance on Demand. Like you said, Dom, this is my bestseller book. And um, I discovered that there are 11 different money saboteurs. And I can give you a few examples today. We can, you can go through the interview process, Dom. <laughs> <laughs> well, with all of your excitement and your lovely accent, I wouldn't, I'm not even mad hearing you talk. Like, keep, keep going. <laughs> it's all good. It's all freaking good. Oh, great. So I can uh, share with your audience, you know, we don't know that we have money blocks and until we do, you know, until there's zero in the bank, until you're struggling. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know I had any before that. And what's happening is you can define if you have. So let me give you, for example, a way to find out if you would have perhaps a money block. One of it is you look at your timeline, at your history, and you look at any time you earned a lot, and you lost a lot. So is there any zigzag, <laughs> you know, zig and zag? I don't know. That's the French way to say that. <laughs> up and downs, up and downs in your timeline. Are you going always going up, earning more, constantly growing and earning more? Or have you like one of my clients, and that will be evident, earned a million dollars seven times and seven times lost it all <laughs> after seven times i guess you want to wonder if you have any money blocks <laughs> <laughs> i can say that again <laughs> she's got all the lego blocks probably <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly oh man it's a so once you know that, for example, it's like the weight, you know, the yo-yo thing, it could be the yo-yo thing for the money, you know? Yeah. Now, the other way to see it is when you can't hold money in. Like I have one of my VIP clients right now. She's the wife, very well-known, super, you know, wealthy person. However, she cannot hold money. So she was herself like the VP of sales of a major company in the world and she was earning half a million dollar a year or more and guess what she she was fired a few months ago and she had nothing to show for her she had zero savings she's she squandered it all she was wow. spending it as much as she was getting it and mm. Yes. And so we talked about it. It's like your clothes and going shopping. And so if you see yourself not being able to hold money in your hands, that's a sign. That's a sign. Okay. Um, also, of course, if you cannot make money, you just cannot find a job, etc. You're just totally all the time at the limit and or another way to see you have money blocks is you have lots of credit card debts and you can't pay it off and because you're stuck in the same routine and pattern. So there is many ways but uh, to see if you will have a money block. So let me help you find out what are those money blocks. So one of them, you can think about it in terms of emotions. So dumb, for example, when you think about money, what kind of emotions come to you? Uh, actually, happiness, actually. That's definitely one of them. <laughs> like, that's that's definitely one. one of them. Wow, that's a really good one. So you can keep that one. 
<laughs> Keep that. <laughs> I had someone that I knew. Some people are feeling, you know, a lot of things like guilt and shame and this and that. This person was literally allergic to money. I put some money, physical money on his body and he got literally a panic attack. Wow. Yeah. Wow. He was born in such poverty, he couldn't stand money. He had associated it with, also he had rage and anger towards money and all of that, which we discovered was actually his father that he should have been angry at, not at money, but he was angry at money. So, uh, and panicked uh, about buying a t-shirt and he was sweating it, you know. Wow. Even though he had the money. So imagine that level of trauma from the past that affects your behavior. How do you buy? What do you buy? Uh, will show you. If you buy with joy and ease and you know there is more or you're constantly counting and thinking, oh, you know, I have to work hard for that. And so just become aware of how you feel about money in general. When you look at your bank account, when you look at your credit card account, how do you feel? Are you in fear or are you at ease or are you happy or, you know? So emotions is uh, one way to see that you might have blocks and, and these could be cleared and released. Now, of course there are beliefs. So for example, Dom, what could be a belief that you have about money? Oh yeah, definitely. One that I feel like I'm still working on is belief that money is actually good for everybody else because i mean the thing is like if you get money the more money you get the more people you help so I've been working definitely on that because <laughs> the classic yeah. christian background they like to misconstrue the classic scripture of money being the root of all evil and we all know it's not <laughs> yes yes thanks dom that's a very good point and very good example um and it has been anchored, you know, all your childhood for years, going to church or whatever and listening to that. So it's reconditioning your brain to know that uh, money is just a neutral thing and it's going to exaggerate your character. So if you are loving and caring and generous, you're going to be more generous and having fun and being loving to nature and helping. And if you're not, it's going to exaggerate that trait too. And that's all it does. It's kind of help you exaggerate and increase because you have more choices. Now your choices are based on your personality. And if you have a loving personality, you're going to do something fantastic with that money. And so, Woo! yay, yay. So I can see that um, you're working on that. Good for you. I would encourage everyone to, to really integrate that thought. So there are a lot of beliefs about money. You know, it's hard to get uh, this and that. So think about what kind of beliefs do you have that might not support you and your, your well-being. Now, there are a lot of events. So number three are events that happen in your life. So for example, Dom, you would review from childhood on what happened to your dad, for example if he lost his job at one point, or if you lost a house, or you had to move, or um, I remember this young girl, one of, that was saying that when she was young, she had to pay the bills because she was the only one speaking uh, English in her family. So at seven years old, she was supposed to do the check, write the checks and pay, you know, at school or anything. And the thing is, oftentimes they didn't have enough money. So she was the one having to deal with telling the person she could, they couldn't pay this month. Look at the responsibility on her shoulder and not being able to write the check. And at seven years old, you know, and now you stay in your entire lifetime when you make a check, you have this pattern inside that's afraid of not being able to pay and all those things come back when you unconsciously affecting your decisions. So 
that's the events. You want to look at that and make sure you clear. If there were also traumatic events, like for me, for example, one of the first thing I had to do was to clear all the resentments I had towards the team, like we were doing real estate and we lost the whole thing and the team was horrendous. And I had to forgive everyone, forgive myself, of course, so if you have had any money trauma, you need to clear that because if not, it's in your backpack, it's lowering you, your energy and uh, absolutely affecting your ability to be successful in the future. So that's one big thing to do. Make sure that your entire lifetime, if there were money traumas, neutralize them, find, you know, if you want to do map or any other method, find a way to clear that. Oh, family history. The next one, I want to share that with you. You know, we think that we're just affected by our own life. But actually, there is now scientific proof that the DNA records every trauma from generations. And money are big traumas. Now imagine the potato famine and things like that it could still be in, in some of some people's DNA. But one uh, story that I have is a client of mine. She used to be at 17, she was very successful. She was one of the top 10 tennis players in the world. And she, she played in Wimbledon. So she made a lot of money at the time. And guess what? She lost it all. And then she became an incredible designer. This woman is a genius on, on foot, like she's one of the top golfer and designer now. And I mean, whatever, she's gifted. She touched something, she goes for it full out. So she was a designer, she had her own company, made several million dollars. Guess what? Lost it all. Ouch. <laughs> ah, so I did it again. Then she did it again. So when I talked to her, she was my designer. So I say, all right, let's look at that. And I follow my protocol and I say, there is something in your family, like on your mother's side, grandmother, what happened there? And she said, oh, my grandmother, she was really rich. She had all fields in Texas and everyone was expecting to inherit from that, especially your mom, you know, the children. And just before she died, this older woman lost her mind, or not, we don't know. She gave the entire inheritance to her gardener. Wow. <laughs> Imagine the gardener, what kind of relationship they had, we don't know, but it's not all. <laughs> There might have been some uh, hedging going on. <laughs> <laughs> Something was going on. And then this family, so she told me, of course, the kids like couldn't, they couldn't believe it. They were shocked out of everything. And so she was the third generation. So that was the grandma, the mom and her. So what happened to her is that every time she earned money, someone was, would steal it. One way or another, it was a wrong business partner. It was someone who stole it. And I realized the pattern. She was repeating the grandmother's pattern. Mm. Wow. Until I cleared it. She didn't even remember. She had to call her mom and she said, yes, the mom confirmed. Yes, that happened. And yes, this, I mean, she had to confirm the, what we were talking about. And she cried and released it. And then since then, she has been so successful and there's been now five years and she's like going up, up, up and never stopped. But you see how generational patterns can affect your life and you tend to reproduce. Like the brain is like trying to reproduce in order to heal it, to solve the issue. It's still trying to solve it because it's called a conflict, you know? And the generations had the conflict and couldn't solve it. It just didn't make sense to their brain. When you have this inner conflict, is it's like 
you have something that happens, it's traumatic, you can't really express it, you can't express your emotions, it's too late, there is nothing you can change. And that's what's traumatic and conflict comes together, inner conflicts. And then the brain is still like an open loop and is trying to close the loop and understand what happens. So from generation to generation, it can reproduce the situation. So that's pretty, uh, pretty important to know. So look into your grandparents and see what happened. Is there a pattern in your family that has been reproduced to humongous trauma that you know, someone in your family might be replaying. So that's really um, fascinating. So let me give you another question, but this one. <laughs> All right, imagine money is a, nope. is a character. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> this is where last time we... <laughs> <laughs> So try to forget about last time, Dom. <laughs> what if money was a character? And we are trying here with that question to look into the subconscious relationship with money. So what if money was a character? Who would that be? Ah, uh, character. Hmm. Uh, let's go with Mary Poppins. <laughs> What did you <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I mean, last time, what he did last time, he said, "Oh, the old uh, the old Santa Claus." And then I told him, "Oh, good. So he comes only once a year." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that ruined everything. I was like, oh, yeah, "Every day is Christmas for it," but it's like, "Oh, Santa Claus!" Like, no. No, make sure your money character is not Santa Claus. It comes around once a year. No, you don't want that to be a character. That's so bad. <laughs> whole whole world shook for me. I'm like, oh, wow. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the power of perspective, y'all. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Santa Claus. Yeah, that's, uh, that doesn't work out that well. <laughs> <laughs> basically tax return money for a lot of folks basically Santa Claus tax <laughs> return <laughs> oh man so yes yes so just think about it you know next time you will have a better answer than Santa Claus <laughs> we'll do that a year from now I challenge you to get another subconscious archetype so yeah but some people i mean i asked someone else lately and she said it's like uh, uh, you know like in a hotel someone who serves you and opens the door it's um how, how do we say that i don't remember in english now but it's um uh oh sure Yes, Ashura, but even better than that, like in a super rich hotel, you have your own. Oh, bellhop, right? Uh, yes. Elbow, so you, have bellhop. Your own... <laughs> you have your own guy and he opens the door and does everything for you. And that was her uh, analogy. And uh, I say, well, that's a good one. Money opens the door for you and you can go anywhere you want. Hey, why not? And um Yes, so that, that was really good. So here we go. I think uh, we shared, I shared a few of those and they are uh, all explained in my book, more or less. So you can see and uh, do your own analysis and, and break through because it's time to have fun and enjoy abundance and um, enjoy life. And, you know, I know your, your people who are listening Imagine everyone listening would be a millionaire. How much good stuff can we do on this planet? You see, how much good stuff? Imagine you were a multi-millionaire, Dom. What would you do with it? Multi, oh, sure. multi. Just. Oh, wow. Well, 
quit my day job for one <laughs> full-time <laughs> entrepreneurship quit full-time entrepreneurship do the traveling the podcast will be every day out of the week yeah it, it definitely like that i'll probably be i'll definitely what i would do if, if i was a multimillionaire. definitely <laughs> Oh, great, great. Well, why not? It's our right. It's our birthright. We can do, be, or have anything we want. And that's what I want to leave the audience with. It's just a question of wiring your brain, thinking thoughts that support you. And it's possible now with the methods we, we have developed. Uh, they are faster and faster than ever before. You know, with maps, you don't have to remember anything. You don't have to suffer, you know, talking about the past. It can be very fast and gentle. So there are new methods. It's like computer science. You know, it's getting better and better. The computers, they're getting faster. While in psychology, at the cutting edge, we are doing the same as computers, you know. We're beginning to handle the mind in a much gentler and easier and faster way. And so it allows everyone to transform. And it's, it's time on this planet, I believe so. Let's rock it. Let's, <laughs> let's have fun <laughs> during that lifetime. Uh, you can say that again, indeed. That's right. That's right, <laughs> indeed. Just because we have smartphones, we don't have to make sure our brains become stupid. Like, let's just tap into the power of our brains. Very powerful. Yes, I like that. You better have smart brains and <laughs> stupid phones. <laughs> Oh yeah, especially with that autocorrect too. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, right. It's like trying to type the name Colette in your phone, and then it puts, "Oh, you mean collector?" Like, no, Colette. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well we're coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive and that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're 25 again but this time in 2021 with all of your knowledge and experience what advice would you give to yourself oh. keep going <laughs> keep going never stop you can be or have anything you want as long as you never give up yeah that's yeah. right that's right never give up y'all that's right it's like that song never gonna give you up that's right never give up never give up i have and keep going keep focusing on what you desire and uh clear the rocks on the road you know whatever is don't be afraid to go and clear what needs to be cleared and change so that you can be and become the person you truly came here to be on this planet. You have, you have a humongous potential and let's explore and expand and use our potential in this lifetime. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. Expand and use our potential indeed. That's right. So expand the bank accounts and the waistlines, right? <laughs> I'm not the waistline. <laughs> Another waistline. <laughs> maybe expand the piggy bank waistline, maybe. <laughs> yes, the piggy bank. The little pig, you know, get bigger. <laughs> the little pink pig, you can put the money in there. It gets bigger and bigger, and then you get to keep yours your slimness and your beautiful energy yes <laughs> whatever it doesn't it's all good no matter what just enjoy life enjoy it to the fullest every single moment there is no other thing than now so you know it's better laugh now <laughs> you never know when you will laugh it's a laugh now have fun enjoy that's right, indeed. So for those who want to make their piggy banks extra fat and make their bank accounts extra fat and heck, maybe even help with clearing those generational DNA codes that may have been left behind as blocking their money, like what's the best way for folks to keep in contact with you and keep up with all that you're doing, Colette? <laughs> 
Well, uh, you can go to, first I would say, go to Amazon and get the book, uh, Abundance on Demand, or it, it's in Audible also, so that you can have a lot of things in there. There is a link where it leads you to a free a video training and eventually to come to my uh, workshop, a two hour webinar where you can actually experience clearing your blocks uh, using map. So the book is a good flow, you know, you can read the book, click on those links inside and then you can end up seeing me uh, for two hours in a mini group and have a fantastic experience. Uh, if not, you can go to the website, map, M-A-P, coachinginstitute.com. That's our international you know, website where we train also therapists, coaches, healers. And so, yeah, and click on the button free training, I would say, and begin with that, a free video training. Find out more about MAP, how powerful it is for every area of your life, not just money, actually. We ended up, of course, expanding to all areas of life and, uh, and see me in a workshop, in, a, in one of those webinars where you will experience MAP. That's, I think, the, the best thing to do. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Well, there you have it, folks. That's right. That's right. Buy the book, buy the audio book. That's right. It's good stuff indeed. Because if I'm not mistaken, I believe, uh, is your daughter reading the book? If I'm not mistaken, someone else was reading the book, if I'm not mistaken. It wasn't you, right? Oh, yes. It's not me. You're right. It's my daughter-in-law. She's French, oh. too, but she was younger and she had three months to spend recording a book. <laughs> 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 I outsourced to the <laughs> young boys. <laughs> oh, don't worry. You're still young yourself. You're not collecting Social Security at the age of 90. You're still young. Don't worry. <laughs> yes, I'm getting younger, actually. I didn't tell you that. I get younger every day. <laughs> Amen to that. That's what I'm talking about. So that means you have one lucky husband then. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, here we go. So I'll see you soon, everyone, hopefully somewhere on the path to your uh, beautiful, thick bank account. <laughs> Big piggy bank and healthy and loving life and enjoying life in all areas of your life. This is your host, Don Braben. Hope you enjoyed what you just heard. And if you really did, do me a solid and leave a review if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, on YouTube, wherever you're listening to. And subscribe to hear more because more is coming your way to advance you further than before.